Zimbabwe, like many other countries on the globe, has been grappling with the effects of climate change. And chief among these challenges is the provision of clean and safe drinking water. Consequently, cholera cases have been recorded across the country's 10 provinces, with the highest number of cholera cases being recorded in Harare's high-density suburb in the suburb of Kwazana. I'm PJ Nagoli and this is Industry Watch. And in this week's episode, we visit a key player in the provision of safe drinking water equipment and purification services. And I am joined by Aquadox Engineer, Engineering Technologies, water systems, water systems engineer, uh, Mr. Muzungu. How are you doing, engineer? I'm good. How are you, sir? Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Maybe to begin with, take us through, may you shed more light on what Aquadoc Engineering Technology does. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, at Aquadoc, we mainly focus on water technology, which include uh, water purification and um, water engineering systems, which include bore drilling and um, services like bore insulations and services like water treatment systems, which include um, water purification systems for commercial use and for domestic use. And also, we focus more on uh, issues to do with irrigation. So basically, we a company that focuses in water engineering as a whole. Like um, what the name says, Chiremba Wemvura in Shona. So you can see what Tirwano Aripupa Kumika Shua Kutimvura Yevano Yaka Chena. Uyeshe, not Kuchena Kwega, but also people have access to water and for their use, either for irrigation, either for, more, for home use, or either for commercial use. Engineer Trevor, take me through Kalamchiti Mimi purification service. Yes. What does this really mean? All right. Power purification, we mean we are treating water. Okay. Um, the water, the, the word treatment now, it means we are taking water from an unknown source or from a known source, but because of uh, the environment that we are in, uh, definitely it ends up making the water unsafe for drinking. Okay. So as you can see, uh, these days, we are battling cholera. Yeah. We are having so many challenges where we hear kwa 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 cholera. Mm -hmm. And if you look, people they are saying, how come cholera is coming out when we have bores? How come cholera is coming out when we have tap water? How come cholera is making so much noise on the streets when we have access to, to water? Yeah. But now, is the water safe to drink? Mm -hmm. That's where we come in as aqua drop. Where we are saying, yes, in as much as we have a bore, but it has to be safe for drinking. In as much as you have your tap water, yes, but it has to be safe for drinking. So that's when we come in with the treatment process where we are removing certain elements in water, where we are taking out certain junk that is not desired by our body or that doesn't fit the water drinking standards for us okay. uh, as human beings to consume. So as Aquadoc, we are coming in as a big player in making sure that people have access not only to drinking water, but yeah. to clean, safe drinking water. And also, you have access for water to do other domestic uses. Like, God, it is a garden rako, mm -hmm. you want to have a uh, best shower mbamako, you want to have uh, your, your land being irrigated, we also come in. But when it comes to purification, we are mainly focusing on the health aspects, where we are saying every water that a human being is supposed to consume is supposed to meet my drinking standards. Yes. But the, the interesting thing, Engineer Trevor, is yes. growing up we were told Kanamun uh -huh. Achira Exactly. They now have safe drinking water. Kanamun Achira Chiborani, the world, yes. you now have safe drinking water. Yes. So how do we now distinguish to say this is safe, clean drinking water? This is not we in, in, in terms of the bowl. All right. So like Shamataura in the long run. Yeah. Right. As you can see industry is growing each and every day. Mm -hmm. And um, mostly the environment is the one that is suffering in the industrial revolution. Yeah. And because of the industrial revolution, that is now affecting our land. You can see that we now have a lot of contaminated sources. Mm. So they are no longer safe for drinking. Yes, long back they used to be safe for drinking because Bana Bapanga Pasna industry, Bapanga Pasna industry, Bapanga Pasna industry. But if you look around because of technology and evolution in the industry sector, you can see that now people, they are now focusing more on production and ignoring the land. Now the land is the one that is suffering, of which we get water from from, 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 from underground, from the land. So, uh, coming back to your question, the bore sources, they are no longer safe for drinking. Why? Because of the industrial contamination that is taking place. Okay. And 
um, for you to know whether your water is safe for drinking or not. Um, these days we encourage our clients or we encourage everybody with a water source, either a well or a bowl, to take your water to a, a reputable lab where you get an analysis, your full water analysis. And you can because it standards. Okay. cannot be suitable for drinking because it's failing to meet A, B, C, D. So when your water now fails to meet drinking standards, that's where we come in as Aquadu. And it, to say, okay, your water is failing, maybe it is too much salt. Yeah. Or your water is failing because it's contaminated with bacteria or cholera. Your water is failing because there are a lot of phosphates or all different kind of metals that are found in water that are not suitable for our own health. That's when we come in as aqua dog and you make sure that your water meets drinking standards. You make sure your water falls within the WHO and uh, the national drinking water standards so that we know that we are uh, preserving and we are protecting our health people um, we are protecting our health as a as a nation and also we are protecting the health of the future generation that is coming. You talked of earlier uh, ele elements in yes. your earlier response to my question. Yes. Take me through this. What are some of these elements that we do not want in our water? All right. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Like what most people are bathing, because yeah. I know which one. I know which one's out. So I'm very not to go and do it. I'll give you a very good example. Um, in our in, in in our local area, where a lot of people they are crying with what is called hard water yeah. or what is called salt water. <laughs> exactly. Our boys. <laughs> so with hard water, you find good. We have a lot of elements. I guess on a calcium and a magnesium. Do I know most of the elements that causes the water to be hard? Mm. So when we are talking about hard water, we are talking about the water. You go to Okanika Safe. I put here. Okay. You watch your gaze. I'm not going to start out all the way white. You know, uh, and even if you drink it, you don't enjoy the taste. Okay. You don't feel the natural taste of water. Yes, mvura ina taste, but you can zwan mvura yacho yaki taka 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 salty taste. Yeah. Then we we classify that water as salt water or as hard water. So mvura is those ones that get it. It's supposed to be treated. So my elements that mainly causes that water to be hard are mainly calcium and magnesium. And they are found in abundance underground. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, mostly calcium and magnesium will not uh, eliminate them. Okay. Then we come to, there are certain areas now uh, where there are a lot of industrial activities and mining activities. Like if you go to the areas like Chegu, Tukadoma, Kwekwe there, you find with a lot of water that side, especially from underground, yeah. is rich from magnesium, is rich from calcium, it's also rich with heavy metals. Vana mercury, they are being found there. Vana lead, they are being found there. Vana zinc, they are being found there. Vana, vana manganese. Of which those elements, if you take them, right, um, uh, on, a, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you find that you start to develop ma, ma chronic uh, illnesses. And so, yeah. like if you go to the ping, you you find out that most of the children go 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 when they get a brown light. Right. It's because of the type of water that they are that, that they are taking that makes their their teeth to be brittle and to have that brownish color. If you go down there, you yeah. find and you find a lot of children when they know the blue eye baby. We must this one to get it blind or like it's because of the type of water that they are drinking. It's salty and it's very rich in manganese. So you find with my elements, well, if they are not taken yeah. um, out of the water, they are going to cause my chronic illnesses where you, don't, you might not see them maybe as you grow up, maybe but 30, 20 years, but over time. You're going to see and you, you start to develop manguma symptoms. If, you, if somebody comes and tells you, you know, it's because of the source of water that we're using long back, you, you won't believe it. But that will be the actual uh, truth that is happening. So um, a lot of elements, especially with... Uh, Industrial Revolution, they are now being found underground okay. because uh, most people they are not following especially uh, regulations to do with uh, wastewater management. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they come and they take those people uh, and sometimes, you know, there will be funny, funny activities happening yeah. uh, that are not being regulated. And at the end of the day, it's the, the environment that is being affected. And we are taking the same water that we are drinking from that same environment. So those elements, that's where they are being found. Engineer, you, yes. you, you, you're telling me a, a very interesting story. Yes. But Aquadoc is bringing an interesting and unique technology. Take me through what inspired the, the, the starting of Aquadoc. All right. Um, 
I think it has been a dream ever since I was uh, Form 2. Um, you know, I remember there was a day, uh, it was, I think that was the only day that I was admitted to Muchipachara. Okay. So, you know, permission school, we had uh, my tapes labeled, bore water, and with my tapes labeled, gem water. Yeah. So, like, machine no pizza. So, tap uh, bore water is only for drinking, and uh, bore water was only for bathing and other, other uses for pa, pa, my hostels. Yeah. So there was a crisis where Mvura Ebo, you know, my, my, my bowls, they went dry. So there was a crisis here Mvura. I was this one person I know Mvura and Nganga, you know, water is water, like what most people do. I take that water and I got water really serious. I was admitted for almost two weeks. Is it diarrhea? Is well, it cholera? Is it what? Yeah. So from that day, you know, I just told myself, but, uh, I need to do something about water. Because, you know, you would walk about two, three kilometers for you to find the Chiburani Chukuko. Just to, yeah, and why would not do those other five liters of Mvura? So that's when I said, you know what, I need to be a very key active player in the water industry. So. Growing up, I also had an advantage when I went to college. Um, uh, I was employed at ZPC, okay. where I was uh, a water assistant, uh, plant, uh, water plant assistant. Yeah. So that's when I started to appreciate more about the importance of water treatment. Because in, what, in power generation, we don't want any type of, uh, any funny source of water. Yeah. We want mainly H2O. So that we are able to have my my, my turbines able have exactly <laughs> so that they can turn you know without uh, my, 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 my blades are chidambuga because yeah. of uh, my, my, my elements and the end up to steam so that's when i started to appreciate more about water and then i also had an advantage to come and uh, work for aqua clear okay. i was a quality control engineer at aqua clear then i realized looking at all those big equipment and I then i just this. said hey, i can do this yeah. you know and uh, the technicians, they, they inspired me, because mainly they were taking guys from India, they were taking guys from China, from Germany, to come and fix the machines. And I would make sure that each and every time they are fixing a machine, awesome. I'm also there, yeah. Andrew Gwan. So that also made me to, to challenge myself, to say, you know what, I can do this. So uh, as time uh, uh, moved, I then started to realize, well, you know what, my pocket is, I, 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 I'm not being inspired coming to work. Okay. Yes, I'm being inspired with the environment, yeah. but you know, forget why oh, also, yeah. I'm not here, I'm so far. <laughs> so I started to, to realize, but you know what, there are a lot of uh, opportunities that we, can, that, that we can venture into in the water yeah. industry. So initially, the, the idea that I had, I once discussed with my friend, you know, the way people are buying mineral water, especially from Aqua Clear, it's sending a message with the water industry. People are starting to appreciate, appreciate. the importance of uh, clean water and quality water. So that's when I said, you know what, I need to do something with water. Mm -hmm. And then fortunately, a friend of mine came, mine's Oliver, and then he told me, that, you know what, there are some systems that I've seen that, um, that are treating water, you know, but I don't know if you can do it because, you know, you're working at PAPS, I'm sure you've seen some of these things. Mm -hmm. So the idea uh, started talking with uh, my friend, and then a friend of mine, Vanaz Omfun, said, hey, if I want to have a, a bottling company, then I pass the yeah. Then he said, ah, you know what, so why can't you call the water Wanapa and O? Uh, so we started <laughs> as a small company, the Gipsy Tambure Massachusetts. I think if you go the areas around Mbuzi and um, uh, Highfields, yeah. I think I was one of the first key players to sell such a water. You must here, ends one hour. So a lot of people they started to appreciate, ah, even break a chip and break Nigeria. People they were calling break Nigeria and break Nigeria. But then um, I was not really much satisfied with now the incomes that were also coming okay. from 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 uh, from, uh, from from the sales. Mm -hmm. And also we having a challenge where you know our machine was very very small. It was a man-made machine that we had. So we had a lot of challenges in trying to fix uh, machine or to come back to the, 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 the normal operation. So uh, I went through uh, one of my suppliers uh, who is in Taiwan and then we talked to the guy, I need help. And, it, and then he was, why are you not uh, installing these machines? Yourself. Because you are always calling me and asking me uh -huh. this 
if you are interested in installing these machines, you can tell me and I can help you through the journey on how you can install these machines, how you can run these machines with your engineering background and yes. with your work experience where you've been in the water industry. I'm sure you can manage this. So from there, that's how uh, Aquado the came into play. Aquado. Yeah. <laughs> so we started um, doing, you know, my, 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 my small installations, but um, we were taking risks. Okay. Yeah. You, you just uh, advertise, we do water treatment, we, we are there to make sure that your water is clean. And then there was one, uh, one guy, um, not a guy as such, but um, as a friend of mine. Uh, we went to, to college together. And then he said, Asha, you know what? Uh, we're discussing this idea. Run on those and argue about water and that. Now. I've left pipes, I'm selling water and all. Then he said, you know what? Kumba is a challenge of uh, oh, water. Run. It's salty and if I bath, you know, I'm having funny reactions on my skin. So can you come and uh, uh, assess my water and do something? But all of this... My guy, I just said, I can do it. But, um, yeah. I just took the risk, my guy. And well, I talked to my supplier and he said, no, I can give you A, B, C, D. You are supposed to do this and this and this and this. So the first installation was more like a visual installation. And the guy was like, what are you doing? And I said, no, wait, everything is going to come out good. And that was my first and successful installation. And from there, we have never failed in water. We have been making sure that what you expect as a client is what you get more than that. Well, there you have it, an interesting story that I'm here in hearing from engineer Trevor. Again, this is Industry Watch with me, PJ Nagole. And on this week's episode, we visit a key player in the provision of clean, safe and drinking water. We're just going to take a quick break, but don't touch that down. Welcome back to Industry Watch and on this week's episode, it is an interesting episode where we are taking you through what one may say, how is mineral water made? If I were to title this, I was just going to say, how is mineral water made? Engineer, before the break, we we're just talking about what inspired you to start Aquadoc uh, te Engineering Technology. Yes. Take me through some of the challenges. It hasn't been a smooth road. Yeah, Take me through some of the challenges. Yeah, you know... I think uh, it's a challenge that most entrepreneurs face. Mm. Uh, we, uh, first of all, you are battling with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, like myself, I had a challenge to, 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 to decide uh, if I'm supposed to dump the work, work. I peeps and start my own journey, or I continue balancing the two. And I tried by all means to balance the two. But you know, your passion always to where you are supposed yeah. to go. So at the end of the day, in the and I see a bunch of peeps, and I started to do this. And you know, when you are now starting something with a dry pocket, mm. uh, my friend, it, no one. It, it's so difficult. Mm. You know, I've, I, I've approached so many people to help me in uh, establishing the company, but um, I think uh, the lessons that I've managed to learn from, from, from all these people that, uh, that I've been going through, uh, asking for funding and uh, uh, explaining to them my vision and my dream. You know what they told me? Yeah. They said, you have everything. You have everything you, you have need. everything that you need. Yeah. So I don't know, why do you need my money? <laughs> so after going through a, a series of the same answer, you know, I, I, then just say, I, I then just sit down and say, you know what, what is it that I have that these people are saying you have everything yeah. that you need? So I then realized, you no, know, I have everything that I need, but what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to eat. I'm supposed to start. The first so, step is always the hardest. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, having the first step was one of the most challenges that, you know, made me uh, decide whether I'm supposed to start this or not. But, um, you know, after making the first steps, things started to move on. And, you know, you always have a challenge where people, they don't trust you first mm -hmm. uh, because you are a young you engineer. Are a new company. You, yes, you are a new company yeah. and you are supposed to install uh, equipment with uh, 200, 300,000. So I think that's the other issue where people, you know, will be trying to understand where you're coming from and where you're going. But, you know, thank God. Um, I think uh, one thing that I can say about myself is I'm a risk taker. Yeah. yeah, you took a risk. Yeah, I took the risk. And it you paid know, off. Where people, they would ask you, are you able to buy this machine for me from China? And yeah. I would say, yes, I'll yes. buy it. You know, trusting 
uh, an agent who is in China. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after payment is being done, I'm supposed to uh, collect items from China to Zimbabwe, from Taiwan to Zimbabwe, from South Africa to Zimbabwe. So, yeah, I've been facing challenges in terms of, you know, uh, getting things here in Zimbabwe, trying to convince a client and also trying to make a sale. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, everything uh, works out. Everything works out. Engineer, well. take, take me through. Um, in 2015, the world leaders came together yes. and agreed on 17 sustainable development goals, the SDGs, the famous SDGs. Yes. Now, interesting enough, number six talks of clean water and sanitation. Yes. How is Aquadoc Engineering Technology uh, complementing this vision? All right, so uh, when you, uh, it now comes back to my story. Uh, High school. Yeah. So, um, as I said, with it, uh, I, I took it upon myself to say, you know what, I need to do something about uh, the water, especially in schools. Yeah. So, um, most people, uh, they've been focusing mainly on bore drilling. Mm -hmm. But if you look at these days, bore drilling is no longer sustainable. Why? Because when I have a bore, I have a bore, I have a bore, and all these same people, they are taking water from, from the, the same, same water source. Mm. Yeah. So, we have also moved a, a step further. Uh, is Aquado in where we are we are establishing uh, drinking water uh, from uh, river sources and uh, dam sources and so far we have done about four projects in yeah. four big schools uh, in uh, Mashingo uh, in Marondera uh, what do you, you're, uh, you're going back to these high exactly, schools exactly big school yeah. and uh, Mangura and the other one is in Uchinoi where we are saying these people they have a challenge where they are saying around this season we have a serious challenge with bore water not coming out yeah. because of uh, the season. So we've taken uh, a step further in a way we are saying, okay, do you have any other source of water that is there? They yeah. say, yes, we have a dam nearby. You say, okay, since you have a dam nearby, we can make that dam water suitable for drinking. for drinking. If you want mineral water, we can give you. If you just want potable water, we can give you. But you know, uh, it won't be sustainable for a school to run mineral water, of course, mm. because we are talking of huge numbers. Yeah. But we've been uh, able to have a, a technology that will sustain and that will also bring out uh, clean water from uh, the dirtiest water sources, a dam water. Imagine where we need more to get the chimwa and the water, but the water coming out after our water treatment system, it's meeting all drinking water standards. Now, with with that mindset that I was talking about in the first segment, yes. where people just think that bore water, if it's a bore, it's safe water. Yes. How has the market responded to the product, to the well, technology that is? Uh, I think uh, people, they are starting to appreciate uh, the importance of water treatment. Where we are no longer only focusing on, uh, on commercial uh, water systems, but also in domestic industry. Where people, they are now telling us, well, you know what? Yeah. You know what? And uh, all these complaints because of changes in climate, changes uh, in ground formation, changes in, uh, in, ver in the environment around us because of industrial revolution. People they are now starting to appreciate. To appreciate. You know what? Bore water is, 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 is no longer safe, and uh, you find out what bore water. Um, it may be one of the most dangerous sources for you to take water from, Is it? compared to council water. Yes, because with council water, the water has been treated already, but maybe you might only face challenges where if it comes from the source coming back here uh, to, to the point of use, you know, our plumbing is now old and all the different types of uh, setups of uh, pipe layout and all, it may contaminate the water source coming from, from maybe a motor and Jeffrey, but in general, council water is safer to drink compared to bore water. Because bore water, remember, it is a lot of salt. And most of these salt, you may not see the effects now, yeah. but in the long run, you start you to, 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 to experience the uh, effects of, of bore water. So people, they uh, realize, well, you know what, we also need these uh, domestic water systems inside our house. And mind you, it's not more of like a new technology. Okay. It's only that maybe as a nation, um, we're a bit as behind. Africa, we're a little bit behind. Mm. But if you go outside there, these systems, they are there. They are in place where in your home, you can just have your mineral water. Just go to your tape, you open the tape, mineral water is coming know. out. Yeah. So uh, we are moving towards uh, sustainable development goals. And we are making sure that we are not leaving in one. Now, with the plants that you're talking about, you guys are installing water treatment and purification plants. Yes. How big does the water source have to be for one to have that? 
Oh, all right. Now, the water source now depends with uh, uh, the capacity output that you want. Okay. So, uh, if you want to do, let's say, uh, if it's, it's your home, mm -hmm. your bowl is enough. Or your cans of water that is coming through, it's enough for you to have your water being treated in the cans through into your home clean and safe. And uh, if it's for commercial use now, mm -hmm. that's when we are now looking into uh, the output that you want to say maybe a day. And that's why we recommend either to use uh, maybe one or two or three more sources of bowl so that you can increase uh, your, your production output. And also we are making sure that for each and every industry that we have installed a water treatment plant, we are also coming up with a provision for wastewater treatment. Okay. Where we are saying that wastewater that you are throwing away, you are not supposed to throw it away. We can also recycle it back either into the process or for other uses around the industry, industry for, 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 for cleaning your floors and uh, uh, washing uh, of, of, of machines. And if it is home, you can now use that wastewater either for you know, gardening and all other uh, uses, not for drinking, of course. Now, Engineer Trevor, you are a qualified chemical and processing engineer. Yes. However, some sections of our society have criticized local universities for churning out half-baked Half baked engineers. Yes. How do you re respond to this? Uh, yeah, I know that uh, people they are talking about, uh, you know, my guy, they they only have uh, an understanding of group and group. Yes. Yeah, to, 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 to some extent it is true. But um, I think it also comes out to, uh, to point out the point where you yourself, how do you take it upon? Like myself, um, I had the privilege while going to uh, going to school mm -hmm. so that really helped me to understand the industry so we did college in terms of experience wise I was uh, I was okay. yeah, good yeah because uh, I would understand what when you're talking about a water plant for book this is the water plant but after book I'm also going to see in reality the water plant yeah so I'm sure uh, what the minister is trying to do it's going to help uh, a, a lot of graduates uh, in terms of understanding their role in the, in, in the, in the society, where they are introducing uh, uh, the industrial parts. Yeah. yeah, because it's difficult for you to spend four years trying to imagine a water system. Yeah. But you know, if there is a provision for you for to you stay to see after it. learning and you go and see it and maybe have a chance to operate it, mm -hmm. it will make you um, have an understanding that is way much better. So I think where the minister is taking us through, for me, it's, that's, that's the way we are supposed to go as a nation, if you want to develop more. Because it, it really helps a person to understand more and also to appreciate more uh, of what uh, that person is learning. So uh, where we are going, I, I know it, 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 it's a story of the past, but yeah. where we are going, I'm sure we are in the right track. Where, because you, can, you cannot compare a person around a poll and a person around a university these days. Because yeah. you find with a police student and a, and a student that end up for uh, apprenticeship, he has a more appreciation of the industry than a person that ends straight to college. Mm -hmm. So I think what the minister is trying to do is to, it will bridge the divide. Yes, to, it will close that gate okay. where you have both experience and also an understanding of how the system operates. Now, if, as I alluded to earlier on, the nation is battling a cholera scourge. Yes. Now, if I come and install uh, water treatment and purification plants, in my home, yes. is this going to take get rid of the bacteria? Yes, uh, like uh, our systems, all of our systems that we use is upper door. They are nanochemical. Okay. We use mainly our nanotechnology. So we find out what uh, these days uh, there is uh, a, a bigger player that has come into play, uh, a UV light. Okay. So you can just have a basic uh, water filtration and then you sterilize your water as it goes through your house. So the sterilization process makes sure that any living organism, mm -hmm. any bacteria, anything that, that is breathing or that is surviving in water is getting rid of. So with our technology, we are making sure that we are not only putting a filtration or a treatment system okay. that doesn't have a disinfection. If you look at our whole package, it includes the pre-treatment, it includes the treatment, and also includes the disinfection process. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not only a, a, a one unit or a, a one process. It involves stages where we are making sure that we are treating the water, 
We are making sure that the water is safe for drink, yeah. and we are also sterilizing that water, either at domestic level or at industrial level. You spoke of something that I found interesting. Yes. You say that your process does not involve chemicals. Yes. Expand on this. All right, so we are using uh, nanotechnology. Um, just the technology that I, that I also adapted mainly from my suppliers. The advantage with uh, nanotechnology is it eliminates the use of chemicals. Okay. Because use of chemicals, it makes the process expensive. And also, uh, some people, they react to some of these uh, chemicals that are being used in, in water treatment. So the nanotechnology has come to take, uh, to close that gap of uh, making sure that we, as a, as a people or as a nation, we are not subject to uh, certain chemicals that are being imposed, uh, mm. that are being dosed in water. But it's uh, making a process more sustainable in a way where we are removing certain elements in water at a different stage. Okay. Uh, using uh, processes like adsorption, using processes like ion exchange, using processes like uh, reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration. So all these processes, they are not putting chemicals inside uh, the water, but they are removing elements as they pass through um, the processes to say, you know what, this is a stage where we are dealing with salts alone. Mm. This is a stage where we are dealing with uh, microorganisms and all. So the whole process now makes it, you know, uh, more sustainable and uh, also affordable to use. We are going to take a break, but when we come back, I'll be joined by Engineer Gerald to take us through the entire process of how water treatment and purification works. Please, don't touch that dial. Welcome back. You are watching Industry Watch right here on NRTV with me, PJ Nagoli. And on this week's episode, as I have alluded to earlier on, we are taking you through how water purification and treatment works. This is our last segment, so we are going to make it interesting. I am joined by Engineer Gerald. Now, Engineer Gerald is going to take us through how the process continues until you see this in your shops. So let's go, Engineer. Take me through this. Thank you, PJ. So the water that is coming from the bowl, uh, it's being sucked by the pump from here, the this side. Then it's being forced uh, with high pressure, as you can see, around two bars into our, uh, our, it's a mixture of glass media and carbon. It's a mixture of glass media and carbon. Okay. So basically we are doing mechanical filtration here. Uh, so our carbon is going to absorb smells and odor. Uh, then the mechanical filtration, the, uh, the, the glass media is going to work to remove uh, other uh, solid particles that might be in water. Okay. Then from 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 this uh, mixed bed, we now go on onto our resin, the ion exchange. In this ion exchange, that is where we are going to, to exchange ions, which are the ones which have been mentioned earlier by engineer trainer, yeah. uh, calcium and manganese, for us to have what we call soft water. Then the soft water moves on to the uh, semi-polishing uh, filters. This is just before our uh, nanomembranes. Okay. Then from the nanomembranes, uh, we move on to our membranes which are behind here. Okay. Those are our, nano, our, our, our nanomembranes, which are going to make sure that they will separate any molecule which is not water from water. Only water will be permitted to pass through. Then when it, when it passes through, it will go through uh, the UV light uh, where we are going to sterilize uh, the water. Then from the UV light, uh, we go through the process of ozonation. Okay. Uh, so basically, this is what I can say is the, is the water treatment process. This is how we get our, this mineral water uh, by this process. These machines, we basically uh, import them, uh, uh, which are sub assemblies. We do the main assemblies here in Zimbabwe. So from the RO membrane, we say the water passes through the UV, the ozonation, into our uh, uh, finished water, uh, processed water tank. This tank stores our, 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 our processed water, which is now ready to be packaged in, on our machine. What is the, process, uh, the, the use of the UV? UV, it, it, it's basically sterilization. We are now trying to kill any living organism that will be in our water. Yes. Earlier on, you said that you are separating uh, molecules that are not of water yes. from water. Yes. Explain that. What do you mean? We're saying any, any, uh, anything which is, uh, which is a, a molecular size uh, which is bigger than uh, a nano, okay. a nano molecular size is mm -hmm. not water. Water is the only item which is now permitted 
to, to enter the membrane. So when it enters the membrane, we are now guaranteed that what we are going to get at the end of, of the process is just only water. Okay. The ones which are not water, uh, that is, we said we are going to, uh, the, the process before, we said we, we do iron exchange, yeah. softening water, making the, 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 the solid soluble. Then when they, when, when they are in that extent, they can permit into the, the membrane, but not to the side where we have, where we have our processed water, but to the side that is going to be rejected as waste water. Okay. So PJ, yeah. uh, we had our water from uh, from the, the final uh, finished product. Yes. Uh, it's now coming to our filling machine. Oh, to our this, filling machine. This, this is yes. Filling machine. Okay. So on this filling machine, uh, our bottles will be entering from that side, the big side. Then they come here where that where pre is done. Oh, okay. the bottle. After the, after pre is done, it's then transferred to the filling, to the filling step where, yeah. where it's filled. After it has been filled. We now we have your caps which, which are coming from that side going down there then the cap are now put on by that uh, automatic uh, head, head, head caper uh, which is going to, uh, to, to to close the bottle then our bottle is now out you talk of pre-rinsing engineer is that safe enough for for a person to then drink it, it will be safe enough because basically where we get our bottles the guys they use also the same standards for drinking water okay. so they, they specifically know that this bottle that we, that, that we are saying these guys the bottle is going to be used for for, for, for for the purposes of drinking water. So there are standards that also measure our drinking standards, uh, uh, basically. Yeah. And if you look inside these machines, there are numbers written all over this. So what capacity is this machine? Uh, this is a, a 2,000 bottle per hour machine. Okay. It can be used 2,000 bottles per hour. Meaning per day, how many? How much can you guys produce? Uh, per day, we are talking about 42,000 bottles. So is this where the process ends or will continue? Uh, from here, uh, after after the bottle has been filled, you now go to uh, put in your, 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 your tag at this bottle for a specific player. Okay. The tag, then they also so if it's PJ water. mineral water, then? Yes, it is now PJ there. mineral water. And okay. then you also put your dead code. Then from dead code, you go on to shrink wrapping so that it will be easy for you to transport it and then move it. Then after shrink wrapping, then now the product, the product is now ready to be sold in the market. Oh. Well, interesting conversation. We have been engaged right here on NRTV. This has been Industry Watch and I am PJ Nagoli. We have been talking about how do we make our water safe? How do we make our water pure? Hence, we have been engaged in a conversation with one of the key players who are supplying water purification and treatment plants to make sure we take you through the journey of how your water comes from your tip until it is bottled like this. Again, this has been Industry Watch. I'm PJ Nagoli. Catch you again next week.